Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another weather forecast here. This is going to be another major update on this incredibly large and potential major severe weather outbreak that will be continuing off in tomorrow and Wednesday, and then even bring some scattered thunders from Thursday and Friday in the Mid Atlantic. Uh, but again, I made a huge, I made a major new map with a uh, huge updates. Also, we have major new updates on the SPC. Now we have to, we have up to a level three on this SPC, so an enhanced risk has been issued. So that, that is another big change here. We also have another bit of a bit more of a widespread threat, which we'll be looking at later on. We have major updates as well on the severe weather radar, uh, also on the STP and SCP. And also, we have major updates really almost everywhere. But again, if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, guys. Thank you guys so much for all the support we've been getting in the past couple of days. It just really means a lot. Let's try to get the 2,190 subscribers by the end of today. I think we can do that. And also, please share the channel. I will definitely have another update later this evening on the severe weather and possibly another, another update on the major heat wave. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Now let's get into this major update video. So this is my new map again. For those people who have seen my maps in the past couple weeks, the severe weather. This is not my. This is not the SPC outlook. We'll be looking at the SPC outlook after this, and this is not what I think the SPC outlook. This is in general by using colors uh, showing who have has the highest risk for either tornadoes, large hail, or in general very strong severe weather bands. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be seeing the highest chance for tornadoes. It just means you're going to be seeing a very good chance for incredibly strong. Uh, storms that obviously can cause a lot of debris, that's going to cause straight line winds, and a ton of hail. So as you can tell in the pink area, this is where we have our highest risk for seeing extremely large hail and damaging winds, and also these very, very powerful, possibly large supercells. Again, that's going to be right here. We would have this highest risk in this pink right here. I actually made this earlier this morning while it's actually in a Zoom video. So I made a map for my YouTube video on a Zoom. Um, and again, we have a very widespread threat, though. Even in the yellow, that we actually have a decent chance for possibly some tornadoes as well, especially in the Illinois, Missouri area. We actually have a bit of a big threat for tornadoes out there. So that's why we have that yellow extending all the way up into areas, again, now in southern Texas, and that's widespread down to southeastern uh, Kansas. Areas, areas again, we in the uh, enhanced or in the yellow, uh, and even the orange, again, you guys have a pretty decent chance for some severe weather out there in Oklahoma City, Dallas, uh, Springfield, Poplar Bluff, and even near Waco, we have that possibility for some threats, especially we're going to be seeing very widespread hail uh, throughout this outbreak for sure. And then once you get into the red and pink, that's when we have really a very, very good chance for incredibly large hail, damaging straight line winds, possibilities for supercells and hook echoes in these systems. So very likely for a possibility for very, very powerful bands here. That's going to be for the Little Rock, Texarkana area, uh, areas again to now far southeastern Kansas. So Kansas, you guys are finally in the actually decent severe weather outbreak and even parts of near the uh, southwestern part of Kansas where we have Joplin. And in the pink, this is where we have our highest risk for uh, damaging winds, large uh, supercells, and maybe even... Um, Squall lines, that's going to be for Texarkana, much of western Arkansas, and much of eastern Oklahoma. So this is my uh, map here. This is using not only the SPC chances and all that. Uh, we're also using all the SCP, SCP, and all the models we'll be looking at, uh, including radars. Hope you guys enjoyed this map, and, now, and I hope it helps. Now let's get into the models. As you can tell, the SPC is kind of similar to mine, except obviously the colors. Uh, but as really, as you can tell... Uh, most of the areas that are in this enhanced risk have, again, uh, that really high, uh, that really high risk. Like I said, that uh, red, pink, and even orange. So as you can tell, it's mostly similar. Except I extended the rest a bit more to the east. Uh, but again, here is the SPC outlook, and as you can tell, it's definitely really changed compared to yesterday. We now have not only a level three. Uh, but the uh, but the slight risk has definitely extended a lot all the way up to getting near the Chicago area and getting to the far southern tip of Wisconsin. So it's actually very likely they may extend this marginal all the way to the Minneapolis area and move this slight risk for Madison, Wisconsin, far southern uh, Minnesota. I think that's very necessary. But this is our area of focus right here in this level three enhanced risk. It's very it's not going to be really uh, likely to have a moderate risk for those people who are going to be wondering. But here is our area of focus in the uh, orange color. Actually, the, the areas that actually in the orange color don't have the highest risk for tornadoes, which is actually quite shocking. You're about to see uh, why in a second. But 
if you know anybody in the uh, enhanced risk or if you live in enhanced risk, you're definitely going to need to be on the lookout for much of tomorrow, uh, really tomorrow night and much of Wednesday. So you're definitely going to possibly not have a plan. Maybe you might want to get some food or something just in case anything happens, but it's very likely you can definitely be seeing very large band that could be tornadic and also very likely you can be seeing incredibly large hail. Hail is a very large, uh, really uh, maybe our primary threat for this outbreak. So that's going to be for far southeastern Kansas, much of southwestern uh, uh, Missouri near Joplin, areas into Little Rock and much of western Arkansas, uh, northeastern, uh, sorry, northwestern uh, Louisiana where Shreveport is, Dallas, Fort Worth. You guys are now back in that enhanced risk. Last time you guys were in enhanced risk, you guys got really nothing whatsoever. So uh, definitely in, just because you're in enhanced risk doesn't exactly mean you are going to be seeing the incredibly large hail and all that. Because uh, some areas are enhanced risk, sometimes don't even see anything. And then that, that's also going to be for much of northeastern Texas. So that's our area of focus. And even in the yellow color, we do have a very good chance for tornadoes. And especially winds is winds and hail is definitely going to be the most widespread threat. Tornado threat again. Look at this. Like I said, the the highest risk for tornadoes is not in that uh, is not it where we have the enhanced risk. It's actually where we have the slight risk. And that's going to be uh, showing you that just because you're an enhanced risk doesn't mean you have the highest threat for everything. So we have a very widespread threat uh, for tornadoes. That's going to be for Missouri, Iowa, and Illinois. So usually when we get into May, that's when the Midwest starts to see a ton of tornadoes like Illinois, Iowa, parts of Minnesota, and Wisconsin. That is when, that's the month where we start to see the most tornadoes in these areas. So as you can really notice that as we continue to get closer to May, this tornado is not only going to get, get out of the southeast and south central, but move all the way down to the Midwest where... Uh, where you think it's just snow, but also these areas are in the, the northern, uh, this is basically the tornado alley of the northern United States. So, and that 5% five, five chance is our highest risk. I don't necessarily think that we will be seeing a 10% chance. Uh, if anything, it, they might extend this 5% chance, another 5% chance right here. But for the 5% chance, that's our highest risk for tornadoes. So that's actually, again, a very decent chance for tornadoes. So don't let that 5% chance uh, rule out the th uh, really threat for tornadoes because a 5% chance for tornado risk is very high. So that's going to be for much of there. Even St. Louis now, Chicago, you guys are just outside of that 5% chance. We have areas near Rockford, Aurora, uh, Joliet. Uh, we have Peoria. We also have Springfield, of course, uh, not far from Jefferson City. Iowa City, Waterloo, and Davenport, and much of those areas in the Midwest. And then we have this 2% chance all the way from southern Wisconsin all the way up to the Gulf. Uh, so as you can tell, even this 2% chance uh, is actually very widespread. And we have, we've had tornadoes, we've had multiple tornadoes in a 2% chance. So don't rule out that possibility just because you're in not the highest risk. So tornado threat really in this outbreak is very widespread. Uh, again, the, like I said, hail threat is going to be very widespread, especially out here into the south central where we have those uh, reds oranges and pinks that's where we have a very big possibility for very large hail uh but just because you're not in those big colors doesn't mean you're not going to be seeing hail like areas in those greens and maybe even yellows actually also will be seeing uh, uh possibilities for hail which is maybe not as large but 30 percent chance highest risk for hail today that's going to be for oklahoma parts of far the far uh, tips of arkansas uh, Missouri and Kansas. So let's say Oklahoma has the biggest threat in general, the highest and most widespread area for hail uh, today. That's also going to be including Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Wind threat as well, like I said, we're definitely going to be seeing very, very widespread uh, wind threat. We also have a significant uh, risk for hail as well today. And then we also have a significant risk for a wind today. So like I said, we're definitely going to be seeing very big threat for straight line winds here. Without a doubt, definitely going to be seeing a lot of uprooted trees, branches, and a lot of things are going to be uh, misplaced. So, 30% chance there. That's for much of northeastern Texas. Uh, it's basically where we have the enhanced risk. Now, we look at, now we're going to be looking at here at the GFS model here, Pivotal Weather. Uh, again, this is also a new update. So, as we now get into really tomorrow uh, or tomorrow at night, Tuesday night. Uh, so, uh, Tuesday night, we're going to start seeing that severe weather developing here in the Midwest. It's going to be quite severe again. That's uh, for Wisconsin, Iowa. Minnesota and even some severe thunderstorms maybe widespread to the Dakotas. By by Wednesday night, or sorry, by Tuesday night, we have this uh, inflow of energy, moisture, uh, humidity. Uh, that's going to be strengthening by Tuesday night, which we now that, that's what we see now. It defines low pressure system. That low pressure system is going to strengthen. Uh, we're actually going to have two low pressure systems at the end of both systems. 
definitely going to be now strengthening that side for the southern part of the system and also strengthening the northern part of the system. So we're going to be seeing some very strong bands widespread all the way from Wisconsin up to Oklahoma on Wednesday morning. So very big threat for Milwaukee, Green Bay, Muskegon. And then we have that highest threat for uh, maybe tornadic, uh, tornadic uh, thunderstorms. Very, very large hail and straight line winds is going to be maintaining in the south central there. That's going to be a very big risk for southwestern Missouri as well for northern uh, northwestern Arkansas and much of eastern Oklahoma. It looks like eastern Oklahoma does have the highest risk out of the whole state to see that severe weather. Uh, as we now get more into Wednesday in the uh, late morning, the slow pressure systems again. Here we have uh, two again, uh, one at each end of the system. And now this inflow of moisture does now just take a turn out to the northeast. So we're now you're going to be seeing these bands. Uh, we're going to be seeing these bands getting into these areas now uh, by later on Wednesday. But we're still seeing very, very strong uh, severe weather, especially right here on the borders of these states. We've been seeing quite the uh, a large amount of severe weather for these areas in the past couple of days and uh, sorry, for the past couple of weeks, and it's now going to be showing once again. Even a big severe weather threat now for Indianapolis, but for far western Kentucky, far southern Illinois, uh, far northwestern uh, Tennessee, and far uh, eastern uh, uh, Mississippi, right on the border with the Mississippi River, that's where we have a very good severe weather threat as well as here for northeastern Texas, north uh, northern Louisiana, and also into eastern Arkansas. That does arrive by late uh, late morning uh, Wednesday. And then by Wednesday in the afternoon, we had the severe weather now splitting up with this low pressure system now uh, taking these bands to the south. We have this inflow now uh, moving straight up north and then also to the northeast. So that's where we'll be seeing that widespread threat as well for Georgia. And then very, very powerful winds. We're definitely going to be seeing a lot of wind advisories. Isobars are very, very close. Uh, we're definitely going to be seeing a ton of wind advisories coming with these bands. Uh, so these bands right here of severe weather will definitely cause a lot of power outages as it does move to the northeast. And then we have a uh, bit of a less of a wind threat by later tomorrow or later Wednesday for the south central. But still seeing very severe weather for a uh, really strong bands for eastern Texas. And then that's we have that with these, uh, with the, again, the, uh, now all the moisture spilling out to Georgia. Looks like we have a pretty decent chance for severe weather continuing off into Thursday morning. Looks like we might have another severe weather risk now for the southeast all the way into the Ohio Valley. And as you can tell, we're definitely going to be seeing incredibly, incredibly windy conditions out here for all the east coast with these isobars incredibly close. And then that severe weather does move out by really much of Thursday and then still maybe seeing a bit of severe weather by Friday. So this is still a pretty long lasting system here. Let's see if the Wi-Fi is actually acting up. Okay, it's actually working. It was just, I, I don't know what it was. But in the next 24 hours here, but so this is going to be around Tuesday morning. We'll basically see the biggest severe weather threat will be for the north central plains. So this severe weather threat will be starting on Tuesday for sure. But more of a north central uh, really severe weather day. That's going to be for southwestern Minnesota, far northeastern Iowa. It's going to be able to all day threat for the, the north central plains. As we now move a bit uh, now into the general United States, we don't really see these severe weather bands developing the south central or the central plain until the next 30 hours. So that's going to be really in the really the middle of the afternoon. And we're still going to be seeing a very big threat for, again, this This is a big tornado threat for uh, Iowa and Illinois, even Wisconsin. We do have that very big threat. And by the next 34 hours, this is when these severe weather bands really start to develop now into the into the central plains. That's when we definitely start to see that severe weather threat. Uh, let me actually get into the south central plains here. You're definitely going to be seeing these really strong bands now, into, now moving towards Oklahoma City, Tulsa, and very, very powerful bands out here into southwestern Missouri. This is exactly why I have this red and pinkish colors really close to that tip of southwestern Missouri. And look at these very powerful bands now by the next 36 hours. So this is Wednesday morning. We see these bands getting a lot worse overnight. Here we're going to be seeing again this moisture continuing to move out into the uh, Gulf or into the Gulf Coast or Central Plains. That's where we continue to see that humidity, moisture, instability. Very, very strong bands out there into western Oklahoma. So Oklahoma, uh, western Oklahoma, you guys are just definitely going to be seeing the worst of your weather threat out of uh, the whole state. So this is exactly why I have this pink color here into western Oklahoma. And just look at these bands. These are absolutely huge squall lines. 
Uh, of course, we're missing the severe weather as well. Very widespread. Continue to see that uh, for Kansas, uh, and even southern uh, Nebraska, and still seeing that uh, smaller severe weather bands uh, out there into the Mississippi River. But look at these major bands. They're absolutely uh, incredibly uh, powerful, and this is not looking good whatsoever here. Uh, this is why we have a very big threat all the way for northeastern Texas here. This is absolutely uh, crazy, these man these bands, all the way from Tennessee to Texas. A very, very widespread threat for severe weather. Absolutely large squall. This is going to be a large, large squall line. Uh, this is why I actually have these reds very close to the Tennessee border. Very powerful bands heading straight to Little Rock, heading towards Waco, heading towards uh, Texarkana. And that will be going past Shreveport. And then they, they will fall apart later by Wednesday, the next 45 hours, so Wednesday morning. Very powerful bands now moving to Louisiana, parts of Mississippi. And then we have these, uh, again, really large uh, severe weather bands and incredibly heavy rain in the Mississippi River. Uh, sorry, the Ohio Valley. Uh, and then by later on into Thursday or Wednesday night into Thursday, we have very strong severe weather bands now heading towards the Georgia area. Parts of Tennessee, we could be seeing very powerful bands heading towards my area once again. So, we'll say another severe weather outbreak for my area. Now, we're going to be looking at the NAM3K model here on the GFS, uh, starting the European again. And here we have these powerful bands in the next 24 hours there. These will strengthen, of course, in the next coming hours, around 34 hours. This is when we start to see these bands developing in the south central and parts of the Ozarks. And, of course, they are major, major bands here moving into the Arkansas areas, northeastern Texas. Uh, much of western Arkansas. This is exactly why I have these pink areas. So it's actually, again, it's not very likely, but it, there's a possibility we can possibly see a moderate risk uh, be issued. It's not incredibly likely, uh, but it's not, it's not also, it's also not impossible. But just look at this major squall line all the way from Tennessee to northeastern Texas there. And then it will bring in this uh, more rain uh, towards the southeast and much of the Ohio Valley with possibility for very strong winds. Uh, Cape values again, they will be decent, actually very high. Much much of Tuesday of the day, we won't be seeing too much energy of Cape values. Uh, only be seeing some lower numbers out here into western Texas. Uh, only be seeing around these lower 2000s. As we now get later into Tuesday in the day, uh, closer to the afternoon and evening, these uh, the amount of Cape values, uh, the Cape values do uh, really skyrocket now. We're going to be seeing very high numbers now for Oklahoma, southern Oklahoma, northern Texas. We're going to be seeing around very high 3000s. Uh, to some lower 3,000 all the way up into the uh, Kansas area. Then by later on Tuesday in the evening, numbers do fall back down. And then by again now into more into Tuesday night, we do these do, we do these uh, we do see these numbers uh, going a lot higher now. Going to be seeing again uh, some maybe getting very close to 4,000. We're going to be very widespread mid to high 3,000s. And by Wednesday morning, these numbers are absolutely crazy. We're going to be seeing a, a whole ton of severe weather. Uh, severe weather possibilities with po major pop-up systems is exactly why we had that very strong potential for major squall lines out here. We're going to be seeing uh, getting very close to 5,000 joules per kilogram here. Uh, look at this, 4,962. We're just close to 5,000. Very, very widespread 4,000 across Texas here. And that's going to be for Wednesday morning. Let me go back here. That's going to be for Wednesday morning. And then as we continue on to Wednesday, uh, we're going to be seeing these numbers now falling down once again. Now we'll be looking at the wind shear again. Like I said, wind shear is not impressive, but we're still going to be seeing uh, we're still going to be seeing wind shear, but it's not going to be super high where we saw the Easter outbreak incredibly a uh, huge amount of uh, wind shear. Here we have the jet stream moving up from northwestern George, uh, northwestern uh, the, the northwestern U.S. and by later Wednesday, which is basically the day the huge severe weather for the South Central, we're going to be seeing the jet stream. Uh, we're we're gonna definitely be seeing some wind shear across areas into the um, and to the uh, parts of the Ozarks and Midwest. Looks like the most amount of wind shear actually will be into the areas into the Midwest right here, which is actually a possibility why we have that higher tornado threat there and not as high over here. But we're going to be seeing wind shear for sure, but it's not going to be impressive. It's not going to be impressive whatsoever. And by Thursday, we're going to be seeing, of course, these really strong, powerful winds and a little bit more wind shear possibly moving to the uh, southeast with these bands. So that's also a possibility we're going to maybe see a 2 to 5% chance for tornadoes tornado risk for the southeast and maybe a bit of a higher risk as well for the northeast with some higher wind shear so definitely uh, without a doubt a very widespread uh, severe weather outbreak and maybe a possibility for a tornado outbreak but it's not likely we're going to be seeing as many tornadoes to make it a tornado outbreak hope you guys enjoyed the video 
Uh, please do not forget to like and subscribe. I will have another video out later this evening.